Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be working on this B6 Audi A4 and we're going to show you how to install the vent pod boost gauge kit from ECS Tuning. The tools you'll need for this installation include a crimping tool, straight cutters, a Schwaben trim piece removal tool, a half inch drill bit, a 3 8 ratchet, a small 3 8 extension, an 8 millimeter socket, a flathead screwdriver, and an X-Acto knife or razor blade. Included in the ECS tuning vent pod boost gauge kit is a long piece of plastic vacuum line, zip ties, a vent pod insert, a 45 millimeter boost gauge, a moisture filter, an ECS tuning vacuum T-fitting, two pinch clamps, a power harness and boost sensor, a piece of braided vacuum line, and an o-ring for your gauge. To start this installation, we're going to remove the fuse panel cover. To do so, pry on the cover indent with the trim piece removal tool. Once the fuse panel cover is removed, we can remove the lower dashboard cover starting with this screw. Using your 8mm socket, undo the first screw holding the cover in place, then undo the other two screws holding it down, which are located on each corner at the bottom of the cover. Now that all the screws are removed, start by gently prying down on the cover and it should snap out of place. Once the lower cover is removed, squeeze the tabs on your OBD2 port and pull it out, then remove your foot well light harness. Now, the cover can be moved out of the way to allow for a clear workspace. Next, pop your hood, and the first thing we have to do under the hood is remove the battery cover and the rain cover. Now, locate the small hose on the side of the intake manifold, and using a pair of side cuts, a razor blade, or a knife, make a straight cut into the line. Once you've done that, insert one hose clamp on each side of the hose, and insert the T-fitting inside the vacuum hose. Once it's secured, squeeze the clamps together with the crimp clamp tool. To run the vacuum line into the car, begin by cutting a small piece of braided vacuum line and positioning it over the nipple. We're going to run the plastic vacuum line that came with your kit the rest of the way into the car. Begin by running the plastic piece into the OEM grommet and once the desired length is left over, run it against the back of the engine compartment and insert the plastic vacuum line about an inch into the braided piece that's sitting on the nipple. We chose to secure the plastic line using zip ties along the back wall. So far, we've tapped into the intake manifold hose, ran the line along the back wall and secured it with the zip tie here, and continued to run it into the OEM grommet. After it's here, the line will get run along the back side of the firewall, underneath the master cylinder, and into this rubber grommet. Once you've routed the line, run the remaining length into the car. The next step would be getting your center vent pod ready. Begin by prying at the bottom of your vent assembly and working your way around it to the top. Once all the small taps have been released, the assembly should pop right out. Once you have it removed, undo the small plug at the bottom of the vent, and using a flathead screwdriver, remove the faceplate of the vent assembly by prying down on these tabs. Work your way around the vent assembly until the face comes off. Now, Gently pull the horizontal and vertical fins out from the left side of your vent. Once you have the fins removed, remove your vent control arm. This will allow you to cut a tab into your vent door. When you're looking at your assembly from the front, turn it around and to make things easier, slide this door the opposite way of the other one. This will make cutting an access port into the door much easier. Using a small knife or razor blade, make an incision between the second and third dot on the flap door.
Once the piece is cut out, remove it. Turn your assembly upside down. And in the right upward corner, drill a hole using a half inch drill bit. The purpose of these holes is to allow you to route the wires to your boost gauge while still allowing you to keep the functionality of the vent. Now that we've modified our vent, it's time to finish running the vacuum line inside the car. To do so, cut a piece of braided vacuum line and insert the plastic line about an inch into it. Make sure you cut your plastic vacuum line to a desired length to avoid excessive slack. Once you've done so, you have two options. You can either run with or without a moisture filter. For our purposes, we've chosen to run a moisture filter and add another piece of braided vacuum line to run towards the glue sensor. If you choose to install the moisture filter, it makes no difference which end you install on the boost sensor side. After installing the boost sensor, make sure all your connections are secure. If all connections are good, proceed with securing the boost sensor to the car. We've chosen to mount it to this bracket using the supplied zip ties. When you mount your boost sensor, be sure both vacuum line and wire are ran in a safe place and are avoiding moving parts. Now. Take the wire from your boost sensor and route it up through your dashboard into the vent assembly area. Then, take the supplied power harness for your gauge and route it through the same place as your boost sensor harness. After that's done, take your vent assembly and route the wires through the hole you drilled and through the slot you made on the flap door. The next step would be installing the vent pod. Make sure it's right side up and the gauge opening is facing the driver. Align the small pins with the indents on the vent assembly and snap the pot into place. Before installing the face of the vent, reconnect the small plug at the bottom of it and gently work your way around the vent, snapping the face back in. Now, reinstall your vent by firmly pushing it in. Your next step would be connecting and securing your gauge. Insert the rubber o-ring around the gauge, make the wire connections, and while slowly pulling the wire from behind the dash, start sliding the gauge in. If needed, a small amount of grease or other lubrication will assist with the gauge installation. Now proceed to wiring your gauge. Start by routing the open-ended wire from underneath your dash, along the top side of the steering wheel, and to the headlight switch. Running it through here will allow for a safe install while still letting you use the tilt function of your steering wheel. To make the connection to the headlight switch, start by pulling it out. With the switch in the off position, push the button in and rotate it clockwise, then pull your switch out. Now, gently press on both sides of the connectors, release the tabs, and pull the connector out of the switch. Now, slide the connector down and pull it out for easier access. To finalize the wiring, we must connect the gauge harness to the harness on the headlight switch. The proper connections to be made are the following. The red wire from the gauge harness to the black wire on the headlight switch, the green wire from the gauge harness to the red wire on the headlight switch, the white wire from the gauge harness to the blue and gray wire on the headlight switch, and the black wire from the gauge harness to the brown wire on the headlight switch. Once your connections are made, route your headlight switch harness back up to the hole and reinstall your headlight switch. To do so, reposition the headlight switch in the off position and gently slide it back in. Now it's time to reinstall your lower dashboard cover. Reinstall your footwell light and push in your OBD2 port. Once you realign the cover, you should be able to snap it back in place using the clips at the top. 
Reinstall your three 8mm screws that hold it down. Finally, snap your fuse panel cover back on, and with that, your installation is complete. With this boost gauge installed, you can easily monitor boost, vacuum, proper wastegate function, and have a sleek aftermarket gauge with an OEM look.